I'm so tired Feels like I've walked a thousand miles Uninspired oh, Just got me on my knees Thankfully I've got this love It gets me through trying times Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Do Your Part, a series of episodes looking at some of the challenges that are facing young people today and giving you some of the tools that you can use to reform your character and to be a positive influence on your society. Insha'Allah ta'ala, today we're talking about the importance of aiming high the importance of having high aspirations, of having aims and of having goals that you set for yourself and aiming to achieve those goals with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now many of us are familiar with aiming high when it comes to the dunya, when it comes to this world. We're very, very used to aiming high. So when you ask a young child, what do you want to be when you grow up? They say, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a pilot, I want to be an engineer and they aim very 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 high they have high aspirations and parents always encourage their children from a very young age to have high aspirations when it comes to this worldly life however perhaps it is that we don't set ourselves very high aspirations when it comes to the religion of Islam now as I've tried to do in the episode so far and, and as I'd like to continue to do we're going to begin by looking at a hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said if you ask Allah ask him for Al Firdaus ask him for the highest part of paradise and Al Firdaus is the middle part of paradise and it is the highest part of paradise and from it flow the rivers of paradise. This is narrated by Al-Bukhari in his Sahih. And from this we understand the importance of aiming high when it comes to the religion of Islam. That you don't set yourself to the target to be the last person who enters paradise. You know, I'm just content anywhere, it doesn't matter to me. You're commanded to aim high when it comes to seeking paradise. So you ask Allah for the highest place in paradise. You ask Allah for the best place in paradise. You ask Allah for every single thing that you're able to achieve. You ask Allah to make you better and better and better. And you don't suffice yourself with being the, the minimum or being the lowest or being you know, the last one to enter paradise. And this applies to the whole of the religion of Islam. And as I've said, when it comes to the worldly life, this isn't something that is very strange. This is something everyone is pretty much used to. They're used to striving and pushing. You know, you're in a regular job. What's your aim? Whoever says, I'm, I'm content where I am. Whenever somebody says, I'm content where I am, you say to them, oh, this person doesn't have any ambition. This person doesn't have any aspiration. This person doesn't aim high. They don't want to change. When you see someone who says, yes, I want to be promoted and I want to become a manager and then I want to become and then I want to open my own company and then I want and then I want. So you see them in this worldly life that they have a huge set of aims and goals and aspirations. And what we're trying to do in this episode with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to inspire our young people to have these kind of aims and these kind of aspirations in the religion of Islam. Not to be content with simply learning the last 10 surahs of the Qur'an. But aiming and striving to memorize the whole Qur'an. And this is true regardless of your age. And regardless of how much you've tried and failed before. You have to set yourself high aspirations. So we talked about high aspirations in dua. When you ask Allah, ask Allah for Jannah al firdaus al-A'la. Ask Allah for the highest place of paradise. And don't say, well, how will I achieve a high place in paradise? There are so many people before me. There are so many people who have achieved. There are the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. The imams of Islam, may Allah have mercy on them. The scholars of Islam, may Allah have mercy on, on them. And so on and so forth. 
Yes, that's true. But you are dealing with the mercy of the most merciful. The one who there isn't any limit to what he can give. And so putting these limits, these artificial limits, these glass ceilings that stop us from achieving well or achieving and, and aiming high in the religion, this is something which is a huge problem for the young people today and it's a huge challenge for the young people today. Because the young people of today are being encouraged to have high aspirations when it comes to the dunya. To be doctors, dentists, pilots, to be you know, politicians, to be someone who is who achieves something. And even in their existing jobs, they're being pushed. All of us are being pushed. Aim higher, do better, get promoted, get a higher wage, get a better job. And when it comes to the religion, 10 surahs of the Quran, and that's enough for us. We're not interested in learning anymore. We don't believe that we're able to do anymore. When we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Him for Jannah, not even believing that we're even going to achieve it or believing that we might just scrape in the last one through the door. This is not what we're trying to inspire people to do. What Islam is telling people to do and what we're trying to encourage people to do is to set yourself high goals in the religion of Islam because you are asking the one who has no limit to what he can give you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in a hadith which is narrated from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a hadith Qudusi, which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a part of this hadith we want to focus on. If the men of you and the jinn of you were to come to Allah and to ask Allah for every single thing that they wanted, this would not decrease anything from the dominion of Allah. So think about this. Every single person comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks Allah for everything that they want. And they keep on asking and asking and asking and asking. More and more and more. And all of the jinn, they come to Allah and they ask for everything that they want. All of the, Allah's intelligent creation come to Allah and they ask Him for every single thing that they want. In their religion and in their dunya, all, and they just keep on asking. It doesn't decrease anything from the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is nobody stopping you from aiming high and achieving high aspirations, setting high aspirations and achieving goals. There is nobody stopping this, for you from doing this except yourself. And the glass ceiling that you put above your head and you say, I won't be able to and I can't and Allah won't and so on and so forth. So we're going to go over a few points that are going to help us with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aim high and to set ourselves high goals. The first is that we think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer our dua. So you, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you ask Him believing that He will give it to you. And this is a problem that some people face when they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of what they think of themselves or because of what they think about their circumstances or because of you know, what they feel about the way that they're practicing Islam, they feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't answer them. And they feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't give them this, to, the ability to fulfill this goal that they've set for themselves. And in reality, this is not something which is true. Look at the example of Umar radiallahu anhu. He used to make dua, O oh Allah, allow me to die the death of a martyr and allow me to die in the city of your messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the high aspirations that he set for himself in his dua. And the people used to say to him, the death of the martyr is on the battlefield. You know, if you want to die the death of a martyr, surely you want to die, you know, in the middle of the desert somewhere, you know, uh, in a war, in, in a battle. You're not going to die in Medina, in the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Umar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, he set himself high aspirations. He said, not only do I want to die the death of a martyr, but I want to die in the city of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'm asking the one who doesn't have any limit to what he can give me. And I believe that he will answer my dua. What happened? Umar radiallahu anhu, was murdered and was martyred by the curved dagger or the curved sword 
of Abu Lu'lu and Umar died the death of a martyr and he died where? He died in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he set himself a high aspiration and he called upon Allah believing that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would answer his dua and would answer his call. And so in doing so, he achieved something that was beneficial for him and he achieved it in a way that was, that was a very, very, very high goal. Not only to die the death of a martyr, but to die in the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As a part of this, we must be careful that we don't go to excess in our dua. That we don't ask Allah for things that don't benefit us in our deen or in our dunya. Sometimes there are people and we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things that we might think that these are high aspirations, we might think that these are lofty goals, but in reality these are things that have no benefit for us. So we look at when we ask Allah, we take it seriously what we're asking for. And we don't ask for things that are going to cause us uh, difficulty or cause us to lose a part of our religion or cause us to transgress the bounds and the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. So these are all things that relate to our du'as and our aims. Not only that, but we have to set about fulfilling the goals and the aims that we've set for ourselves. So let's say for example, that you have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you with enough wealth for you to be able to give charity and for you to be able to establish, uh, for example, an Islamic center or for you to be able to establish and build a masjid or whatever it may be. You've set yourself a lofty goal. Now you need to set about achieving that goal because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this world asbab. He has created causes for things to happen. And these causes for things to happen, we are commanded, we have to fulfill them. We have to go about trying. So if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the people who have wealth and spend it for his sake, we have to strive, we have to work hard in order to get as much of that as we can. And then we leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, we trust in Allah in setting ourselves high goals and high aspirations. We trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, just because we trust in Allah doesn't mean that we ignore the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put means and ways for us to achieve our goals on this earth. Let's take another example. You call upon Allah and you ask Allah for Jannah al firdaus al-A'la. Then you sit at home and you don't pray. You don't pray in the masjid. You don't do any optional prayers. You don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. You don't have the, the manners of a Muslim and the characteristic of a Muslim. You cheat and you lie and you steal. And then you say, oh Allah, give me the highest place in paradise. No, you have to strive to reform your character and then trust in Allah that when you make dua for the highest place in paradise and you set yourself that lofty goal and those high aspirations, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the ability to achieve them. But that this ability to achieve them is conditional upon you striving for them in this world with whatever you have the ability to do. Another point which is critical in setting yourself high aspirations is to do things in a small and regular way. The most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us are those that are, uh, those that are small and regular. Those that are regular even if they are even if they are very small. So it's not about you saying that I'm going to memorize the whole Quran in a night or I'm going to memorize the whole Quran in a month. But it's about you asking Allah, Oh Allah, make me from those who memorize your book. Make me from those who have memorized your speech, Oh Allah. And then you set about it small and regular, piece by piece, bit by bit, and juz by juz, page by page, Ayah by ayah, until you achieve that goal. You trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is going to give you the ability to achieve that goal and then you strive to achieve it. You know, you get up, you memorize in the morning, you go and read to your teacher and so on and so forth until you achieve that goal that is set for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that you have set for yourself and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the ability for, to fulfill. So this is the first part and inshallah ta'ala in the second part of the episode 
we're going to talk a little bit about what happens if you don't achieve those aspirations, what happens when you fall down and fail, and some more important tips uh, and, and tools that you can use in order to set yourself high goals in the religion and a little bit about how we're going to balance those things with our worldly life as well. The words of Allah, the Qur'an, sent to us by the Almighty, so we can hear and obey. We cannot live our life without the Holy Qur'an. You must listen carefully to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your safety and my safety will be with this great verses, verses of the Holy Quran. We are here in this world for a test and this test and you will have questions in the Day of Judgment. Hear and obey with Sheikh Rifat Muhammad in Ramadan only on Huda TV. I'm so tired, feels like I've walked a thousand miles. Welcome back to Do Your Part. We're talking about some of the challenges that young people face and how to overcome them. And we're trying to give our viewers some of the tools and some tips that they can use in order to bring about that positive Islamic character that is going to change a person and their community and their society. In this episode, we've been talking about aiming high, setting yourself high goals and high aspirations, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua, believing firmly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua, setting yourself a goal that is not excessive, a goal that is not uh, breaking the limits or breaking the bounds that have been set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but a goal that is going to be important for you in your religion to achieve your goal in paradise and we gave an example of this in the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you ask Allah ask him for al-firdaus because it is the middle of Jannah and it is the highest place in Jannah and from it uh, go forth or from it spread forth the rivers of Jannah and we said that this sets the tone or it sets the pace for setting yourself high goals and high aspirations in this second part we're going to be talking about a few more things around setting yourself high uh, aspirations and, and giving yourself goals to achieve and just before the end uh, of the first part of the episode I talked very briefly about the importance of your goals being regular and small steps if you like because just like the famous adage that you can't run before you can walk you need to be able to take things in small regular steps and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those deeds that are regular even if they are small so what we don't want to see is people setting themselves an aim to memorize the Quran for example and trying to do large, large amounts and then ending up forgetting it. But people setting themselves a regular amount that they do every single day, sticking to it, being patient in doing it, and then eventually achieving that goal with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's talk for a moment now about what happens when you fail. Because the nature of mankind is that you're not always going to be successful in achieving your goals. Sometimes you're going to set yourself a goal and you're going to fall short of the standard that you have set for yourself. And that's okay because this is the nature of the children of Adam. This is what the children of Adam do. We set ourselves goals and sometimes we fall short. But let me ask you a question, which is it better to do? Set yourself a goal to be right in the middle, regular, you know, just, just a pass, a pass grade, and then fall short or set yourself a goal to be the best and then fall short. There's no doubt if you set yourself a goal to be the best and then you fall slightly short, you're still going to be up there amongst the best of the people. But if you set yourself a goal to be right in the middle or right at the bottom and then naturally as, as a human being you fall short, 
what's going to happen is you're going to fall short of the minimum standard and you end up ruining the situation for yourself in this world and in the next. So just because you realize that you are going to fall short doesn't mean that you shouldn't set yourself those high aspirations. And likewise, when you do fall short and when things do go wrong, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself down and you begin again with those same high aspirations that you aimed for. No doubt when someone begins learning Islam, if they have high aspirations, they set themselves an aim that they want to be a scholar from the scholars of Islam. Nothing less will do. That's my aim. I'm learning Islam and I want to be from the scholars of Islam because I'm aiming high. I'm not aiming to be sort of, you know, just to know enough. I want to, to know m as much as I possibly can. There's no doubt when you begin on this trek and on this path to learn knowledge, you're going to fall short. You're going to look at yourself after five years and say, I didn't achieve the level of knowledge that I wanted to achieve. But as long as you're still breathing, as long as you still have the ability to go out there and learn, there's nothing to stop you keeping that goal in mind and striving towards it. Because paradise and the highest place in paradise aren't easy to achieve. We know the famous hadith in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Jibreel to go and look at the hellfire and he comes back and says that I don't believe that anyone would ever enter the hellfire. It's such an evil and horrible, horrific place. I don't believe anyone would ever enter the hellfire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him to go and look again. And the hellfire is surrounded by easy things and beautiful things and, you know, things that fulfill the desires of the soul. And he says, I don't believe that anyone will ever avoid it. And likewise, the same happens with paradise in the beginning comes and says that I don't think anyone will ever not go to paradise. Everyone, surely everyone is going to pick paradise. And then Allah commands him to go and look again and paradise has been surrounded with difficulties and hardships. And he says that I don't think that anyone will achieve it. The reality is that it's not easy to achieve paradise. It's not easy for us to strive for that high goal all the time. But at the end of the day, by striving throughout our life and by trusting in Allah, eventually we'll achieve that goal. And you have to remember that even if you don't achieve that goal, even if you don't achieve that goal in your lifetime, what is to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give you the reward of it on the day of judgment? And this happens. Sometimes you make dua for something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the reward of that thing on the day of judgment. So let's imagine that you asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, give me the knowledge to become a scholar in the religion of Islam. And you looked after 10 years and you didn't achieve it, but you achieved some knowledge and you kept on going and you kept on going and you kept on going. Two things are going to happen to you, one of two things. Either you're going to achieve that eventual goal and become one of those learned people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with detailed knowledge of the religion of Islam. Or if you don't achieve that, on the day of judgment, you will get the reward of the one who did. So you're not in a bad situation. It doesn't matter if you have failed, but you pick yourself up and you carry on with your aims and you strive to continue to achieve excellence in everything that you do. And that brings me on to the importance of excellence in what you do. As part of aiming high, we need to have excellence and professionalism in what we do. It's not enough to simply say that I'm willing to just pray my five daily prayers. Pray my five daily prayers in the masjid or I'm willing to pray my five daily prayers and my optional prayers on top. But it's about perfecting the actions that you do to the maximum extent that you can. So while you're aiming high and you're striving to achieve the best that you possibly can, at the same time, you are also aiming to do things with absolute, the most perfection that you possibly can. Another point that I think it's very important for us to talk about is the balance between the religion and between the dunya. Just because you're aiming high in the religion doesn't mean you have to give up your hopes in this world. Just because you're aiming high in the religion doesn't mean you have to stop your dream of being a doctor or an engineer or a pilot or whatever it is that you want to be. But you have to decide at the end of the day how to balance those priorities, how to make those things balance up how to find that, that 
comfortable balance between setting high goals in the religion and setting high goals in the dunya. And basically, the advice that I would give, if you're in a situation where you feel that your goals in this world are stopping you from setting high goals in the religion, then this is a problem. If you feel that your education in this world is stopping you from setting a high goal in the religion, this is a problem and this needs to change. But you can find a situation whereby your goals in this dunya are not stopping you from achieving the goals that you want in the religion. And this is where we need to be. So we talked in this episode about the importance of aiming high, setting high aims, not just in the dunya, but in the religion. We talked about some of the tips and, and some of the things that you need to do about reliance upon Allah, about doing those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed on this earth as a cause or a means for you to be able to achieve what you want to achieve and about the importance of not worrying when you fall short or when you fail and about in the end of the day the importance of your you know your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the realization that if you don't get it in this world at least be with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will get it in the next so that's enough for this episode inshallah ta'ala and i leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until we meet again والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm so tired, feels like I've walked a thousand miles. Uninspired, oh, just got me on my knees. Thankfully, I got Islam. It gets me through trials. And when I read the noble Quran, it tells me what's the truth and gives me all the proof. My Allah is the one, the one, the one, the one, the one, the one, the one. Allah is so much as the one, the one, the one.